As we work to solve triangles that are not right triangles for their missing sides and angles, I mentioned it was a two-part answer to how do we solve these triangles. With the law of sines, what was required for us to have at some point was an angle and its opposite side known to us. So the question then to answer part two of that question is what happens, what if we don't know a side and its opposite angle? Can we still solve this triangle? Well, let's look at the theory behind what we have. Again, very similar to last time. We're going to start off with a triangle. And to do this, I'm going to start with calling this left side angle gamma. Across from gamma is going to be side C, because C is the third letter of the alphabet, and gamma is the third letter of the Greek alphabet. The right side I'm going to call beta. Opposite it is going to be B. And the top angle I'm going to call alpha and the side opposite it I'm going to call A. And very similar to last time, we're going to drop a height down of this triangle. And this time, we're going to break A up into two pieces, the left side and the right side. And let's call the left side just x. We don't really know what that is. The right side then is going to be the entire distance A minus x. And what I'm going to do then is we're going to focus for a minute on angle gamma. And the cosine of that angle gamma. Now cosine is going to look at the right triangle. So the smaller right triangle on the left is going to be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse x over b. And if I multiply both sides by b, we find out that x is equal to b times the cosine of our gamma. Okay. The other thing I'm going to look at is the Pythagorean theorem on both the left and right side. On the left side, the Pythagorean theorem is going to be x squared plus h squared equals b squared. On the right side, the Pythagorean theorem is going to be h squared plus whatever this a minus x is squared is equal to c squared. And like we did before, we don't really like the h in there. So we're going to solve for the h parts. Getting h squared alone by subtracting x squared would be b squared minus x squared. On the right side, getting h squared alone would be c squared minus a minus x squared. And what's nice, if they're both equal to h squared, we know they must be both equal to each other. So b squared minus x squared is equal to c squared minus the a minus x squared. And then here's where we get to do a little bit of fun algebra to get an awesome result at the end. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply out the a minus x squared. Remember, there's a negative in front of it. So that's going to change the sign as it distributes through. So we have b squared minus x squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. Minus a minus is a positive. Remember, when we're squaring, we have that middle term of 2 times the product ax. And then when we square the x, it's x squared distributing the negative through. This is kind of neat because you notice they both have a minus x squared on both sides. If we add that x squared to both sides, we're going to be left with b squared equals c squared minus a squared plus 2ax. I'm going to move the last two terms over to the right side by adding the a squared. That'll give us a squared plus b squared. And subtracting the 2ax, which then is equal to 
c squared. It kind of looks like the Pythagorean theorem almost. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The difference is there's this minus 2ax. And what we're going to do is recall from back up a ways when I used the cosine that x is equal to b times the cosine of that gamma angle. So we're going to replace the x, and we will have a squared plus b squared minus 2a. The x gets replaced with b cosine of the gamma equals c squared. This is the law of cosines. And it is a formula that you should commit to memory. It is a formula that we can use to solve a non-right triangle when we don't have that opposite angle side relationship that allows us to use the law of sines. Now, whenever possible, I highly encourage you to use the law of sines. It's easier and quicker. However, sometimes we can't because we have the wrong sides. Let's look at some examples. Let's say we have this triangle where I know we've got a 40 degree angle. The right side is 9. The bottom side is 8. Notice we cannot say we've got an angle and its opposite side because we don't know what they are. What we do have is a side, an angle, and a side. That's side, angle, side which is one of the times when we can use the law of cosines. To make that work, our angle is going to be the gamma, and the opposite side is going to be the c. The 9 and the 8 in any order can be a and b. And then we just plug into our formula for the law of cosines. Law of cosines says a squared, so 9 squared, plus b squared, which is 8 squared, minus 2 times a, which is 9, times b, which is 8, times the cosine of the angle, which is 40, equals c squared. And what's nice about this situation is I can just type that entire thing in my calculator exactly like it is. 9 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 9 times 8 times the cosine of 40. And when I hit Enter, we end up with 34 point, I'm going to call it 7, equals c squared. So c is the square root of that. And on the calculator, we can just do second square root. And second, click the negative sign to get the square root of the previous answer, which is about 5 point, we'll call it 9. That missing side then is 5.9. We still need to find the missing angles. So let's say alpha is opposite the a. And what's nice now is I now know an angle and its opposite side. So now we can use the law of sines to say that the sine of 40 over the 5.9 that we just found is equal to the sine of our alpha over the 9. Normally, when we have a sine of alpha, we have to be careful of the two triangle case. But that's only if we start off with the uh, angle side side situation. We started off with a side angle side situation here. So we should be locked into only one triangle that actually works here. So when we multiply both sides by 9, we get 9 sine of 40 divided by 5.9 equals the sine of alpha. And then we can do the sine inverse of the 9 sine 40 over 5.9 is equal to our alpha. Again, being careful, when we hit the sine, it's going to open a parentheses. Make sure we close it. So we have the sine inverse of 9 times the sine of 40. Close the parentheses on the sine divided by 5.9. Close the parentheses on the sine inverse. And we end up with 
78.7 is equal to our alpha. So to find our last piece, there's 180 degrees in the triangle, minus the 40 that was given to us, minus the 78.7 that we just found. And we end up with our last angle, we'll call it beta, is equal to 61.3 degrees. And we've now solved that triangle. Let's try solving one more that uses the law of cosines. But this time, rather than giving us the side angle side, we're going to do a triangle where we know all three sides, 5, 6, and 7. And we're going to find the angles alpha, beta, and gamma. How do we decide which one to go after first? Well, the best strategy to do to guarantee that you get the right triangle, hint, find the largest angle first. With the law of cosines. And if you find the largest angle first, you're guaranteed to get the right uh, triangle without having to worry about that ambiguous case where there could be two. So the largest angle, we'll call that gamma, is always across from the largest side, which we call C. Similar to the Pythagorean theorem, C squared is always the biggest one. So the other two can be A and B in either order. And when we set up our law of cosines, it's a squared, or 5 squared, plus b squared, 6 squared, minus 2 times a times b, 5 times 6, times the cosine of the angle, which is gamma, is equal to c squared. Now, when we're solving for the angle, we can't just plug it into our calculator. We have to do a little bit of algebra first. So let's go ahead and simplify a few things. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. 2 times 5 times 6 is 60. Cosine of gamma equals 49. The 60 is attached to the cosine. It cannot be combined with the other numbers. So I'm going to subtract 25 and subtract 36 from both sides. And when I do, we get negative 60 cosine of gamma is equal to 49 minus 25 minus 36 is negative 12. And then dividing both sides by 60, um, let's just leave it as negative divided by negative is a positive. I'm just going to leave it as 12 sixtieths just to make sure I don't get any round off air, just in case. We know if the cosine is equal to that fraction, the cosine inverse of the fraction, 12 over 60, is going to equal the angle we're looking for, which is gamma. So again, our calculator will do cosine inverse of 12 over 60. And gamma, that angle is 78 point We'll call it 5 degrees. Now that we've got one angle with the law of cosines, we should be able to find another angle with the law of sines. And it doesn't matter which one we go after. So let's go after A, or alpha. Alpha is going to be across from the A, which is 5. Gamma is across from C, which is 7. So our law of sines says the sine of 78.5 over 7 is equal to the sine of alpha over 5. And we should be very comfortable solving these, multiplying both sides by 5 to get the sine of 78.5 over 7 equals the sine of alpha. And then we can take the sine inverse of all of that, 5 sine 78.5 over 7 is going to equal our alpha. 
On the calculator, sine inverse of 5 times the sine of 78.5, close the parentheses, divided by 7, close the parentheses, and we find out that alpha is 44.4 degrees. So 44.4 degrees in the triangle. The only one left to find is beta. Each angle or each piece is always easier to find than the previous. We know a triangle has 180 degrees. Subtract the 78.5 that we found. Subtract the 44.4 that we found. Beta is equal to what's left, 57.1 degrees. And we solved our triangle all started by the law of cosines. So another formula to keep track of, law of cosines, we use it whenever we don't have a side and its opposite angle. If we do have a side and opposite angle, we'll use the law of sines, which is much nicer and quicker. But if not, the law of cosines will always get us there. It's time for you to try a few of these, practice them, and let me know if you have any questions.